Hey everyone, back with another review and this time I again want to look at a sword that has been with me for a while and that for some reason I wanted to review but never really got around to. No particular reason, really it's just, I don't know, c'est la vie. Sometimes it just be like that. So, the sword I want to look at today is an armor class Spadroon. Before we get to that though, usual formalities out of the way. So I bought this sword with my own money and Armor Class was not aware that there was going to be a review. Structure of the review is going to be the same. I'll have my talky bit first after this introduction. I will go through the ordering process, delivery, as far as I remember it for this sword really. Um, then a bit about the stats of the sword, then just a bit about, you know, how I feel about it, what I like, what I maybe don't like, stuff I noticed, etc. These things. And then we'll have a picture with the stats so you can pause the video and look at that should you want to. Some more pictures of the sword, different perspectives, though unfortunately this time around uh, they aren't really the best. I just didn't get to make, didn't get to take the photos at a time when lighting was really the best because winter and it feels like it's getting dark at noon. Um, and yeah, after that, just a clip, or some clips, where you can see me just using the sword. So you can see it in motion as well. Um, you might have actually seen it. I think we posted some clips of where it was like in picture already. But yeah, this time, proper review. So, with that out of the way, Armor Class Spadoon. I sometimes get the question what Spadroon I would recommend because I do out of defense Roworth and that is of course written among other things for the Spadroon. It is actually written for all military swords of that era but um, at least in the 1804 edition pretty much except for one I think all swords you see in the plates are Spadroons actually. Um, and that is actually not the easiest question to answer really because we don't have that many available. Armor class is one place where you can get them if you ask them. So that is really what I did <laughs> because I know armor class from the basket hills and I was always quite happy with those. So I basically just wrote in an email that was in November 2017 and I actually just asked him about a Spadroon blade because um, I had a hilt that I wanted to use the blade for um, but then I used another blade on that so I just wrote Ian again and just basically asked like hey uh, can you actually also make a hilt for it so it turned into a full custom job then at that point uh, I got it in August 2018 and I was really quite happy with it. Um, at that point it didn't have the leather bound grip, it actually had a rather pretty wooden grip which was kind of fashioned after an original. Um, unfortunately though that cracked and in February 2019 I had to send it in for repairs uh, which is a bit of a shame it was really really beautiful but um, in the end then we decided to make it a leather bound grip just to make it a bit more durable really for transporting it around and, and things like that really. But since then I've been using it really uh, and it held up quite well I would dare say. So a Spadroon is basically just a cut and thrust sword of moderate proportions. Um, the sword itself, the Spadroon, in and of itself had a bit of a bad rap at first, then it became a bit of a hype, more or less ironic um, most of the time. Yeah, and I think by now it, things calm down. But it really basically just it isn't anything special. The guard is basically the same as the sabers of the time often. Um, sometimes you have a bit more of shells to the side but not necessarily. This is just a simple D-guard 
um, as they sometimes were fashioned. And yeah, moderate is basically pretty much everything about it. So the overall length, just tip to end here, is uh, 98 centimeters. And of that, the blade is about 80 centimeters. Then you have a grip, just including everything that you, the maximum amount of space you can grip is uh, about 13 centimeters. And basically the blade starts from the width at about 26 millimeters and then to the middle it just steadily goes down to 21-ish and then 14 millimeters and then it just tapers down to the tip, which isn't thickened or anything, so I usually put a point over it. The distal taper it starts at 6 millimeters and then it goes down to 4 millimeters and then it goes down to 3. Moderate weight, it's about 697 grams, really. It balances at about 8.5-ish centimeters. Then a bit more forward if you put a tip on it, but not much. And the guard is at the widest point because this is just a simple D-guard. It's about the, it's a tiny bit wider than the grip, so 2.5 centimeters um, in width and about four millimeters of good sturdy thick material. It's a screw tang. I had to tighten it once so far, but that's it. Um, that's basically it already. If you put it on a scale and press down on it to see when it bends, including its own weight of course, it is at about three kilograms where that happens. It's got a good flex. Um, it's nice and thrusting and nice to your partner. Um, it's not really stiff, but it also isn't wobbly like um, some of the uh, like Mesa Sharp earlier type uh, basket hills that Armour Class did, that I have. So with that blade they really struck a nice balance, I find. Um, and it's also, it retains an edge pretty well. As basically all their blades, it's, it's quite tough in that regard, which I like. Um, that was also the reasons why I asked for a simple D-guard and not with any shells, because I wanted to use this with um, heavier blades, just against heavier sabers, against basket hills. I just wanted to be free to experiment, really. And simple D-guard is just a bit more sturdy with that. You don't have any shells that can just uh, take a heavy hit at the very edge, and then you've just got a lot of force acting on them. Ironically, uh, in HEMA, <laughs> I sometimes just prefer to um, take a heavier glove and then just take the hit on that, really, rather than have my sword bend or have my guard bend. Um, that is also the reason, you might have already noticed it, why this grip is so long. If you just use a light glove or have it barehanded like I do now, it's comically long, really. It is, it is a bit out of proportion, really. But that is just because if you want to fence against other heavier swords or maybe you want to use it in a tournament or something, you want a heavier glove. And if you want heavier gloves to fit, you just need more space. As a result, even though you know, just from looking at it, it's, it's a bit of a shame because this is a very beautiful yet practical hilt, I find. But it's just, you know, it's just a bit off because of the proportions. But, of course, the good thing is then you can use it with a heavy glove and use it quite well with a heavy glove. The gloves I have don't really permit for a thumb grip, so the thock or the... Um, Sparring Glove Infinities, you know, they are then more for the handshake grip, but, you know, that's fine. If I want to use it with a thumb grip, that's when I just use my motorcycle gloves. Depends on what I'm, what I'm doing, really. When it comes to fencing, as I said, um, it's, it's just pretty much a moderate cut and thrust sword, and that task, it performs really well. It's nice and balanced. 
Um, it's flexible enough that um, I feel safe in thrusting, which is important for this Padroon, of course. Um, I also feel that it is stiff enough that it is it still feels good to parry, even a heavier sword, which is nice. It is of sturdy build, you know, you can see the guard does have its blemishes, but still, it, it held up really well. The weakest point could potentially, well, not potentially, the weakest point will be the guard that is slotted into a hole here at the base. Um, if you unscrew it, you can basically just take it apart. And um, I had it where that one time I had to tighten it again. It kind of just gotten loose over time and the guard started wobbling. And I was actually kind of worried that something might have uh, been broken in one of the heavier bouts, but no, it's just uh, because basically the uh, yeah the screw got loose and everything got a bit wobbly, it just wiggled itself a bit loose. But tightening it again, it's all fine again. There isn't really much I can say about the sword that I don't like, I have to say. It's uh, as, as far as spadroons go, and I have some that are, you know, more or less experimental or just from different makers and a different type of spadroon. When it comes to just having the archetypical spadroon, that is, it's, it's basically this one. Now, to be fair, um, Armor class is a maker that I specifically chose because I knew that I would get something I like. It's kind of hard to be, or even to attempt to be somewhat neutral with them, because uh, I do have this, I have two basket hills, I have a halfway custom saber that I got used, I have a sharp mortuary hill, so you know, I have some of their stuff already. So, yeah. <laughs> Not really anything where I can say I'm still neutral, so let's take my opinion with a grain of salt. But if you are looking for a spadroon that you can spar with, and that will probably hold up quite well, then, you know, asking for this simple D-guard type of spadroon, um, just from armor class, if you just contact them, I think you will be pretty happy. The downside, of course, but that's not to the sword, that's just the nature of the businesses, then you'll have to wait for them to actually make it. It's probably not something they have in stock. I'm not quite sure if it is a standard item. I know of one other. I think that was made with shells, actually. I've, I've seen pictures of that floating around, but I don't know how many they actually made. But they do, just you know, contact them, and if you want one, I'm sure they'll make it. And I, for my part, really like mine. I'm quite happy with it, and I'm sure if you like fencing with this padroon, you'd be too. Cheers.
deal with commits. One go. Thank you. 